Hello, and welcome to this presentation on school-wide Title I programs. This presentation will offer facts for parents. It is provided by the Office of Grant Monitoring and Compliance with Richmond Public Schools. Title I Part A of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965, as amended by the Every Student Succeeds Act of 2015, is a law intended to improve basic programs in low-income schools. The purpose of this funding source is to provide all children significant opportunity to receive a fair, equitable, and high-quality education and to close educational achievement gaps. What is a school-wide Title I program? It is a comprehensive reform strategy designed to upgrade the entire educational program in a Title I school in order to improve the achievement of the lowest achieving students. There are several goals of a school-wide program. One of those is to meet the needs of all students with a focus on the needs of those children who are failing or are at risk of failing to meet the challenging state academic standards. A second goal is to engage parents and families in the education of their children. And a third is to provide professional development and other activities for teachers, paraprofessionals, and other school personnel to improve instruction. There are several key components to a school-wide plan, which is what is used to guide a school-wide program. The most important of these components is the comprehensive needs assessment. In order to develop a comprehensive needs assessment, a planning team gathers information to evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of the school community. This planning team must include at least one parent in order to make sure the community needs are addressed. Based on the results of the needs assessment, a comprehensive plan is developed that may include hiring properly licensed and endorsed teachers, and providing ongoing professional development. It may also include strategies to increase parent and family engagement or coordination with other federal, state, and local funding to provide services. It may also include products and services to supplement the curriculum. Each year, the school must determine whether goals have been met. The school must reflect on student progress and how to make adjustments to meet the needs of all students. Some of the services that may be offered using Title I funding are before and after school and summer programs. Additional teachers and support staff may be hired. Professional development for teachers, paraprofessionals, and other school personnel to improve instruction may be offered. Programs to improve achievement in core academic areas, such as reading and math may be provided. Counseling and mentoring programs may be offered. Remediation services. For students who are failing or at risk of failing to meet state academic standards may be provided. And finally, parent and family engagement activities may be offered. As a parent or family member, you are invited to participate in the development and evaluation of the squad plan and parent and family engagement policy. Both of those items must be revised annually. 
You may also be invited to participate in family literacy programs or parent and family engagement activities held at your child's school. Your role as a parent or family member is to attend the school's annual Title I meeting and provide feedback on how you think Title I funds should be used to provide parent and family engagement. Also, please go to parent-teacher conferences when they are offered. And finally, review parent notifications provided by the school. Under Title I Part A of the Every Student Succeeds Act, there are five required notifications. The first of these is the annual school quality profile. Your child's school is required to post a link to their specific annual school quality profile on their website. If you do not have internet access or are otherwise unable to access the link on the website, please ask your child's school for a printed copy. The second notification is parental notification of assessment opt-out policies under ESSA. This just means that you may ask your child's school if they have a policy regarding assessment opt-out, and if they do, what that policy may be. The third item is what we refer to as a right to know letter. This notification just lets you know that you have the right to request the qualifications of your child's teachers. The fourth item is related to that in that your child's school must send home what we refer to as a four week letter if one of your child's teachers is not properly licensed and endorsed and is working for four consecutive weeks in the classroom. The last of these notifications is specific to English learners. If your child speaks a language other than English in the home and you have indicated this on a home language survey, then your child may be screened to determine what level their English language proficiency is. If your child has been screened, you should receive the English Learner Parental Notification Letter home within 30 days of the beginning of the school year or within two weeks if your child arrives later in the school year. How can you support your child at home? Make sure your child gets to school on time each day. Talk with your child about school. Set up a quiet place for your child to study and do homework. Be there to help when needed. Read together often and talk about what you've read. Remember, it is a team effort. Please share your feedback on how you think Title I funds should be leveraged for parent and family engagement activities with your school. Also, please be sure to keep the lines of communication open with your school so that you may be involved in your child's education. <laughs>